All right. Hi, everyone. So this is another S5 history class. Today, we're going to embark upon a new topic. So we're done with um, the French Revolution, Napoleon, the Congress of Vienna. So the things that happened after the defeat of Napoleon, Congress of Vienna, the Concert of Europe, the revolutions in 1830, 1848, and the unification of Italy and Germany. Okay, so today we move on to the next topic in S5 history, which is the Industrial Revolution. By the way, there's this, uh, I think, great video about the Industrial Revolution. It's relatively short probably under 15 minutes as well uh, delivered by John Green the author uh, uh, amazing stuff uh, the only thing probably which might uh, pose a, a challenge is that uh, this goes very fast okay but you can watch it you know in your own time on your own watch it a couple of times. It's quite entertaining and informative. So I recommend this. Now just a kind of background or a little bit of background information about the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so we're talking about late 18th century as you can see here, mid 18th century, sorry, until about the mid 19th century and beyond. Okay, but we have to we also have to understand how the world was and in particular how Europe was before the beginning of the Industrial Revolution as you can see here until 1750 most goods most products were produced in homes so if you lived in you know some local village it was very likely that everything that you owned everything that you used these things were all produced in your small village and probably you produced some of them on your own and traded them, you know, or, or sold them, you know, um, to, to other people. But that was the that was the case back then. So th that's what is called the cottage industry okay? or a, a cottage industry, meaning that goods were produced by individuals at home. So very low scale, very small scale kind of production. Imagine that if you're doing something by hand, then you cannot produce too many of whatever product you're, that you're producing. For instance, if you're weaving cloth, okay? So you're not producing at an on an industrial scale. So the Industrial Revolution, when this comes about, uh, this would bring about major changes in the way people lived. So part of this would be the movement of people from rural areas to urban areas. So from the countryside to the cities. Also, there would be changes in the way people work. So in terms of techniques, uh, the, the way they worked, the you know the 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 method that they applied in producing something the equipment that they used the conditions in uh in their working environment etc so lots of changes um in our discussions we're going to begin with agriculture then we'll talk about transportation improvements in trans transportation and also industrial production, production that would become more and more industrial, meaning production that that would happen on a larger scale. Okay, so this video is more of an introduction, a general overview uh, about the Industrial Revolution. So like I said, there was a movement from what was called uh, a cottage industry, people working at home, to the factory. The factory had to be invented and people had to go to the factory in order to work. Okay, the people, industrialists, capitalists, they, they needed places where they could 
house bigger machines and more people working at the same time so that's one major change now this the industrial revolution started in Britain now you might ask why Britain and that's that's an important question why why did it start in this particular country well there are several reasons one is population explosion as you can see here you know Britain had a relatively small population 5 million in 1700 and then when you get to 1850 you have 20 plus million people living in Britain as you can see in this graph I mean that's just you know conti a continuous rise in the number of people living in that area okay how did this happen well there were fewer famines so people fewer people were hungry uh, famine meaning a condition in which there was a scarcity of food okay um, in addition to this in terms of food choice in terms of the variety of food stuff that were uh, uh, available to people you know there there was it was more plentiful there was more variety remember that you know certain things from from colonial areas from those those farther away places that Europeans were able to to bring under their control and influence you know those provided the Europeans with new kinds of food for instance potatoes rice so potatoes that would become they would become a staple in many European diets so you have people with a healthier longer lifespan fewer people were dying so a decrease in death rate and then a higher birth rate you know more people were making babies and more of them were surviving so you have a population explosion um furthermore the plagues ended here is just a you know, a, a simple graphic just to give you an idea of when the bubonic plague uh, happened in Europe and remember the this plague wiped out what one-third of the population at that at one point so the plagues disappeared uh, more people survived okay we're talking about 1700 there were also medical discoveries for instance uh, a smallpox which is a big killer around this time you know it was virtually eliminated thanks to the invention of vaccine okay so somebody somebody invented vaccination and you know this this particular disease no longer posed such a threat to people okay so here Edward Jenner discovering uh, the vac a vaccine against smallpox so you can also look for him for for this guy on YouTube there's a very informative Ted Ed video about him so I recommend that so look at this di at the year so we're talking about 1796 okay around the time that uh, industrial revolution was already underway so what are the consequences of this if you have you know a bigger variety of a larger variety of food more people uh, were being born less people fewer people were dying okay um, humanity was less uh, suffered less from plagues okay and you also have some medical advances okay so what were the consequences okay we'll continue this discussion in the next video I'll stop here so that uh, we don't take up too much time I'll see you in the next video in which we'll continue this introduction to the Industrial Revolution okay see you there